Hello, and today we're going to be looking at the BMO2 from 2012, and we'll be looking at question one. It's a very interesting geometry question, and like last time, we will explore the different possibilities and the ways of solving the question. So to start off with, let's do a half accurate drawing for the diagram. It asks for a cyclic quadrilateral, so let's first draw the circle, and then attempt to draw something which looks a bit like a trapezium or a general irregular quadrilateral inside the shape. We'll label the points A, B, C, D anti-clockwise respectively, and then we'll start labeling points such as AC and diagonals AC and BD, and where they intersect the point E, which is what we've been given so far in the question. After this, we're told about the midpoints of the sides AB, and then the side BC and AD and CD. So we'll mark those on as well, as best as we can. Now, I would first start by labeling the points P, Q, R, and S that we mentioned before, and then starting to join the lines together, since we could possibly use Thales' mid-segment theorem, since we've been given that P, Q, R, and S are midpoints, and that could be something that could make the solution so much clearer. This question is obviously a very long video because it's such a complex and multi-part solution, but it's also a really nice one, so please stick around for the whole video. So we'll start by stating the facts that we have so far. P, Q, R, and S are all midpoints, and they're all midpoints of the sides A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D, respectively. We can also mention that AC and BD are the diagonals of the cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, and they intersect at the point E. But that's a given in the question, so we won't write that down. Now we'll address the question directly. Prove that the circles EPS and EQR have the same radius. Now that we have that written down, it's always useful to have a look at the question and actually read what it's trying to do and asking us to prove. So in this particular question, we can try and draw the circles EPS and EQR in order to get a better visual representation of which circles we're actually being asked for. And with obviously the drawing software I'm using, it's very difficult to get them on the same line. So we'll try that again. The point of this question is we are given very convenient information for say. We've been given that P, Q, R, S are all midpoints, which means that we have Thales' mid-segment theorem. We've also been given that the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral, so there's those theorems in play. And of course, we've been given the fact that we have a circle, EPS and EQR, and we're trying to prove that they have an equal radius, and obviously that leads to ideas such as the extended sign rule possibly. So now that we've drawn on EPS and EQR, we can start looking at those possible theorems. But the first thing to do would be to first label this as our initial diagram as we haven't actually got anything drawn on it yet, so we haven't made any assertions or assumptions. That's what the information given from the question has let us draw. Now we consider the actual question again and we're looking at the radius of the two circles that we've drawn. And when we think of radius, we're trying to prove that they are the same. And as I was talking about before, that leads to a whole set of theorems we could possibly use for this question. It's important to try and eliminate the ones which don't seem likely and to look at the ones that do seem as they, they will lead to a situation. We're trying to prove that there's an equal radius, or in other words, an equal diameter, because they kind of both suggest each other. And so some geometry theorems that we could look at are the extended sine rule, uh, cyclic quadrilateral rules, and as I mentioned maybe in a previous video, the angle in a semicircle, so Thales' angle in a semicircle. And something I didn't write down would be um, also Thales' mid-segment theorem, which I think will come in very handy for this question. So we'll just write down the rule A over sine A equals B over sine B 
called C over sine B, where C, A and B are the sides and the small a, B and C are the angles, and that equals 2R, where R represents the radius of the circumcircle, which is essentially the circle that goes through all three of the points on the triangle. Since the question is quite literally asking us to prove that the radius of both circles is the same, something quite obvious to do would be to try and draw out two triangles in both circles and possibly utilize the extended sine rule, which is the only one of the three rules which actually has the radius as part of it. So we'll use an orange pen to draw out the lines between EQ and ER and EP and ES to create the triangles EPS and EQR. So in order to prove that the two circles have the exact same radius, we'd have to use these two triangles and the extended sine rule to do some side chasing and then prove that the radius of both circles are the same. Oh yeah, something very interesting to note is the, the quadrilateral we have drawn, PQRS, is actually a parallelogram and that parallelogram is known as Varignon's parallelogram. It's a very interesting shape because it's subtended from another cyclic quadrilateral and the fact that we have a Varignon's parallelogram in this question kind of explains to us or tells us that it's been set up in a way which is, should be really easy to solve using just these theorems. So we'll look at the points P, Q and R, S, which I've just circled, and we'll look at the lines A, B, A, D and B, D and create a triangle. So now that we have a triangle and we have that P and S are the midpoints of the sides A, B and A, D respectively, it's possible using the mid-segment theorem to determine that the triangle A, P, S is similar to A, B, D. Similarly, on the other side, we can determine that the triangle CQR is similar to this triangle uh, CBD. And since they're the midpoints, it also means that the lines QR and PS are parallel to the opposite side, so BD. We know that they're parallel because they're similar triangles and they're both equally proportionate. This is also kind of Thales' proportionate theorem, but because they're midpoints, we can say it's the mid-segment theorem. But since, um, since P and S are midpoints, uh, by the mid-segment theorem, we know that P S is uh, one half the length of B D, and similarly, we know that Q R is one half the length of B D as well, since they're both two separate triangles, B C D and B A D, for which the same rule applies. We also know that the side Q R is actually parallel to BD for the same reason, and the side PS is also parallel to BD, which means that QR and PS are parallel, which again is the proof for why PQRS is a Varignon's uh, parallelogram, because the same sort of idea could be applied for the sides QP and SR if we look at triangles ACB and ACD. So now that we know that PS and QR are both half the length of BD and also parallel, we only need the fact that they're both equal in their lengths because now that we know they're equal in length, we can actually utilize our theorem, the extended sine rule. Now I'll just get rid of all the stuff we've written down to make space for our proof or our next part of the solution. And we'll use the extended sine rule in a way of trying to come up with a statement that needs to be proved in order to prove the final question. So we'll write down our side length, PS, and our angle opposite to that side, angle PES, and we'll say that, that equals 2R, where R is the radius of the circumcircle of the triangle PES, also circle PES. And the same thing applies for the triangle QER. So now that we know they're both equal 2R, where R is their respective radiuses, and we want to make them equal each other, and we know that PS equals QR, sine QER and sine PES have to be equal and this happens when QER and PES are supplementary or they are equal to each other. So we'll just get rid of that quickly. Now we need to do some angle chasing I guess because we're trying to prove that two angles are either supplementary or equal and that 
we'll address why exactly that is at the end of the question. But to do that, we need to look at the triangles in our question. One of the triangles would be BEC and another would be triangle AED. And it looks quite it looks quite pleasing because what we've got is actually four points on the circle and this leads way to angles in the same segment. As you can see, it's got a really nice sort of butterfly kind of shape and we can determine therefore that the angle CBE equals the angle EAD. So we've got that, those two angles are equal. We also have that the angles BEC and the angle AED are equal because of opposite angles. So what that tells us is by angle and by two angles in a triangle, we know that the triangles BEC and AED are similar. And that's simply down to the fact that if you have two angles that are the same and it's a triangle, we know that the third angle is also going to be the same. So if you have three angles the same, you've got two similar triangles. And we can use the same reasoning for the triangles AB, E and C, E, D, and we can get that they are similar as well for the same exact reasoning. Angles in the same segment and opposite angles. So we'll just get rid of any lines we've drawn on. So now that we know that those triangles are similar, we can make some deductions about how the angles inside the triangles are also going to be similar. So we know that the angle B, E, D is the same as the angle A, E, D, since the triangles BED and AED are also similar, and the fact that Q and S are the midpoints of their respective sides. As in, if we take the two triangles, the two similar triangles, and put them side by side, S is the midpoint of AD, and Q is the midpoint of BC, and the side BC and AD are the congregant sides when it comes to the similarity. So the angle BEQ and the angle that we get from the other triangle, which would be AES, sorry, AEQ, will be equal. And similarly, we can also make another deduction, and that is that CEQ and DES are also equal from the same sort of reasoning. Now that we have these angles as equal, we can mark them in on different colors just to make it clearer in the video as to how exactly we are going to show that these angles are the same or supplementary. So we have that CEQ and DES are the same and that BEQ and AES are the same. We also have that PEB and REC are the same and therefore we have that PEA and RED are the same as well. We'll mark those with yellow. Now, the diagram's a bit messy, so what we're going to do is, I think we're going to zoom up onto the question in just a bit, but the point we're trying to make is by looking at the different colours, we can essentially assign each angle a different value, so all the different colours have different values. So if we look at the triangles we were initially analysing, we have triangle QER and triangle PES. In triangle QER, we have the angle QE. Uh, C as a blue angle and the angle Q, sorry, R, E, C as a red angle. And painstakingly, P, E, A is a yellow angle and S, E, A is a purple angle. Obviously, the colours have been done to represent values because it's so much easier than writing down the little variables, especially on an iPad screen. So once you've assigned these colours to the angles, we can say that P, E, S is the value of yellow plus purple and the value of QER is purple plus red. What's really interesting about this is we already know something about the colors and the angles that they create because we have the line BD, which is a straight line, and we have the angles BP, PA, AS, and SD, as in BEP, PEA, AES, SED, and we know that those angles are red, blue, purple, and yellow. And we know that because it's a straight line, they all add up to 180 degrees. Now, with this information written down, it's very clear and very obvious to the reader what the answer would be. Because we have angles PES, PES as yellow plus purple and angle QER as blue plus red. And we know that red plus blue plus purple plus yellow is 180 degrees. 
So it's just by induction that PES plus QER must be 180 degrees, which means that the angles PES and QER are supplementary. And the conditions we had for the radius being the same is that the angles are either supplementary or equal. So we've achieved it. Now let's write this down in a nice convenient proof so that we get the full marks of the question. Since the angles PES and QER are supplementary, which is what we just proved using the colorful angles from before. And using our mid-segment theorem earlier in the question, which is essentially just an extension of the proportionality theorem, we were able to determine that the side QR equals PS and also identified that the parallelogram is a Varignon's parallelogram. By the extended sine rule, we have that QR over sine of the angle PS, no, sorry, my bad, the angle QER equals uh, PS over the sine of angle PER, PS equals 2R, um, which essentially means both the circles PES and QER have the same radius, which is what we were trying to prove from the beginning. We could add a small note about why exactly it is that the circumcircles have the same radius, and that's to do with the sine being the same if they're supplementary. If we draw a small cast diagram and call the angle x, and we draw you know, the opposite in the second quadrant, and we call that pi minus x, pi minus x plus x equals pi, which means that they're both supplementary angles. So whenever you have two supplementary angles, the signs will always be the same. So our solution is correct, and both have the same radius.